Welcome back to Motion Pick Recap. Today we're going to recap the drama and comedy movie titled, The Emperor's New Clothes. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. After his defeat at Waterloo, Napoleon was exiled to a remote island of St. Helena, where he died in 1821. Or, at least that's what the history books tell us. A boy is seen watching some images of the great Napoleon, and turns his head, seeing a uniform in the room. That evening, as he watches Napoleon's life through the images, a man enters the room, seeing the images, saying that, no, it didn't end like that at all. He says to the boy, let me tell you what really happened. Standing on a cliff at St. Helena, Napoleon's Marshal Louis says his bath is finished. Napoleon replies he's four minutes late, saying that precise routine resolves the day. As he's telling his life story, about battles, and the loyalty of his troops for his entourage, he sneaks up to a window and opens it forcefully. Outside a British captain called Nichols takes notes of everything he says, and Napoleon comments their cowardliness is a disgrace to their own king. He then tells them they are on French soil and must exit the garden. Napoleon then tells his entourage, let's turn to the future, and a loyal man tells him at midnight their man will be here at his place. He will travel incognito under another name on a ship, and when he arrives in France, an agent will lead him to Paris, after which the double will reveal himself, and the world shall learn of his escape. French patriots will trumpet the news, and citizens will take to the streets, and the white flag of the English king will be replaced with the French tricolor. Napoleon says he's been betrayed by so many, he will now only place his trust in the love of the people of France. A British soldier signals to his commander Napoleon as well. That night, Napoleon takes a painting of his son, saying his son is a disappointment, having turned his back on his father and the empire, but brings it with him, and says he is ready. A boat arrives, and he switches clothes with his double-named Eugene Lenormand. He bids farewell to Louis, saying he will never forget his loyalty. A few days later, Napoleon is working hard on the ship, all while his double is being taught by the entourage how to walk and talk like Napoleon so that the British won't suspect he's fake. One day, the crew spots land, and it is France. Napoleon is happy, but quickly changes mood when learning their course has changed, and that they will now sail to Belgium. The agent waiting for him sees the ship passing by. Some days later, he steps off in Belgium, repeating a code phrase to a poor man he sees to see if he's an agent, which he's not, and Napoleon gives him some coins. While walking out of the city, a horse appears, and as he gets on to ride, a man asks what he's doing. He says he needs to get to France and must commandeer his vessel, and the man is confused. Next up, Napoleon gets a ride on his boat. He makes it to a city where he buy a ticket for an express carriage to Paris, which makes a stop in Waterloo. As they get to Waterloo, Napoleon is stunned, remarking they have changed his battlefield. He takes a look around at the place, after which he rents a room for the night. A woman wakes him up, saying he missed the carriage, which left with all the others. She gives him some breakfast, asking what he thought about the battlefield. Napoleon says it is much changed, and she replies he should have taken a guide, who makes it come alive. He tells her he must get to Paris as quickly as possible, and she says he can ride with night mail to the next city. He asks for her name, and tells her she's been very kind. As he gets a ride, they are stopped by a military patrol. Next, one of the soldiers tells his officer they got him, and the confused officer takes a look at who he's talking about. They lock him up in an old church ruin. Next morning, the officer compares him with an image and exclaims to get him ready. Napoleon is taken away as a prisoner with the officer, who suddenly stops and repeats the code phrase to him, and Napoleon replies with the rest of it, and he bows. The two then ride, and as they reach French soil, he can't help Napoleon any further. As Napoleon takes a wee, the officer yells long live the emperor. Napoleon finally reaches Paris, and goes to a place where someone he knows is going to meet him. He asks a boy if he knows where he can find Lieutenant Truckout, and the boy leads him into a house, pointing at him. Apparently, Truckout is dead. A woman called Nicole appears, and Napoleon introduces himself as Eugene and tells her Truckout is an old friend. She says she can't hire any more veterans, and can only offer a room for the night. That night, he hears and sees Nicole sitting down beside Truckout, saying she tried to be a good wife to him, and starts crying. A doctor called Lambert appears, who's her friend, leading her to her room. The British signal Napoleon as well. The double is enjoying luxurious living, and tells rubbish stories that the entourage is writing down. They suddenly stop him and say it's time for him to reveal he's a fake, but then the double says he doesn't know what they are talking about. Napoleon waits for the English king's flag to be changed to the French tricolor, as he suddenly sees a French guard standing sloppy. He walks up to him, 
and stares at him seriously to make him show respect and stand straight. Meanwhile, Nicole is deprived of all her furniture. As Napoleon returns, he asks what has happened, and she says she got a delivery of watermelons but had no money to pay, so they took everything. He says hardship sharpens the wits, and she gets angry, saying they will soon take the house, and he won't be able to stay any longer. Napoleon upset says he won't sleep under such an inhospitable roof, and leaves, but they hear him fall, and rush to his aid. Later, he wakes up in a bed, and he asks they boy to bring him a newspaper, and says he may keep what's left. Dr. Lambert enters and Napoleon asks how long before he can get back on his feet, and Lambert says in no time, and Napoleon replies no time is too long. He thanks Nicole for her hospitality, who says he should really thank Lambert who gave up his room. The boy returns with the newspaper, and Napoleon sees no news of Napoleon's escape. He begins talking to Nicole and asks about the boy, and she says he's an orphan she's taking care of, and shares a melon slice. Suddenly, people take melons and leaves, and Dr. Lambert tells him to keep weight off his foot. Not long after, Napoleon tells the kid they have work to do. While Napoleon talks with a librarian, the kid sees an interesting machine. As the people return home, they still have a lot of melons left, and Napoleon tells them all to take a seat, and they ask what's going on. Napoleon says their efforts have been courageous, but confused and futile, and that it's now time to prepare a rigorous plan of action. First, he tells them about the terrain factor, saying small streets are too much time loss, and markets too much competition, and that they should focus on big streets. Second, the melons ripen in the warm weather, but it also works for them since people get thirsty. As he continues, people take him more and more seriously, and Dr. Lambert sees the leader in him. As he finishes, he tells them that, we either conquer or perish, after which he's met with applause. Next morning, they take to the streets, and thanks to Napoleon's plans, they sell melons so successfully that there are no melons left even before the day is over. At St. Helena, Napoleon's general demands the double reveals he's a fake to the British captain, but the double tells the captain he thinks the general has become a danger to himself and others, and they take him away. The entourage tells him the whole France is waiting, and he says they will have to wait a bit longer. Back in Paris, Dr. Lambert comments his ankle had a remarkable recovery. He then adds he noticed a scar above his heel, similar to that of their emperor got the one time he was injured in battle. Suddenly, Nicole comes up and asks him for a dance, which he accepts. Later that night, Nicole tells him she would love to have a piano, and learn to play, and Napoleon remarks a piano would be wonderful. On the roof, she tells him her husband truck out went all around the world following the emperor, and didn't see him for 15 years. After Waterloo, they started the melon business, but she says he always seems to have his mind on something else. Suddenly, it begins raining. Next, she gets her furniture returned to her. Dr. Lambert follows Napoleon, seeing him watching the flag of the British king. The melon business is thriving. It starts raining, and Napoleon, Nicole and the boy start playing around while trying to save the drying clothes. Simultaneously, Dr. Lambert is looking through Napoleon's stuff, finding a painting of Napoleon's only son. Next, Napoleon has bought a machine showing the lives of famous people. Nicole says she has bought a fancy bed from a lawyer who got bankrupt, asking him to test it out. He says it feels very comfortable, and she says she wants him to be happy there. Next, Dr. Lambert says he wants to talk to her, and tells her he thinks her interest in this new man Eugene so quickly after her husband's death, is indecent and a betrayal. She then calmly says that it's because she for the first time in her life truly doesn't feel alone. He understands, and then says he has got a position at a job on the outskirts of Paris and will be away for a while, and then tells her as a friend that Eugene is not the man he seems to be, and leaves. That evening, Nicole tells him that Dr. Lambert has moved and that Lambert told her he was not to be trusted, that he is hiding something. Napoleon asks what she thinks, and she answers she thinks he's been in prison, but is not scared, and kisses him. Meanwhile at St. Helena, the real Eugene is eating a lot, talking rubbish, and the general in Napoleon's entourage says he must stop stuffing his damn face with food. Suddenly, Eugene chokes, and can't be saved. Next, the British Captain Nichols tells them that if this is not Napoleon but an imposter, they will get unthinkable punishments for their fraud, and he himself will lose his career since it happened under his watch. However, if this is Napoleon, they will all look forward to a well-deserved retirement in England at the expense of the British crown. He then notes, saying the history shall record Emperor Napoleon died in exile the 5 of May in 1821. In Paris, as the real Napoleon and Nicole are walking, people suddenly start yelling that the emperor is dead, and he runs to get a newspaper. That evening, Napoleon asks Nicole if she's ever seen the emperor, and she replies she has not, 
but that she's seen his wife Josephine once in a golden carriage, and she was beautiful with her blood red ruby earrings. Napoleon replies she's right, that Josephine was very beautiful, and loved red jewels very much. Nicole then remarks perhaps a man with Napoleon's spirit is better off dead than imprisoned. The next morning, while Nicole is half sleeping, Napoleon says he can't stand to pretend he's someone he's not any longer, and tells her he's Napoleon. She pretends to be sleeping, and Napoleon, thinking she didn't hear what he said, leaves. Napoleon then goes to see the garrison commander, and is told to go to the end of the corridor and knock on the door. He is told no one sees the commander, and instead asks for a Sergeant Bommel, and is told he's in luck since the sergeant will be posted there in a few days. Next, Napoleon has bought something. Suddenly, he appears before Nicole in a costume, and she is frightened and pushes him inside. He tells her he came to her for shelter, but found much more, but that it all has become a distraction from his mission, and that he feels like a stranger to himself, telling her to stop calling him Eugene. That night, he tells her he will need her beside him once he regains the throne, and she upset tells him to stop his nonsense and madness. Walking through the streets, people look at him funny, and children mock him. As he arrives at the library, he sees a book with the last words of Napoleon and the stories of his life, and a librarian reads him a short paragraph. It's all rubbish, something that his double has made up, and Napoleon gets real mad, and is thrown out from the place. That evening, Nicole still calls him Eugene, and saddened, he closes the door on her. He stops sleeping in their bed, and as he gets up, Dr. Lambert is there with another doctor. The new doctor says Nicole told them he's not sleeping well and hasn't behaved like himself in recent days. He starts asking Napoleon if he's had any specific symptoms lately, like worsened sight and bad appetite, which he says he has not. The doctor then starts asking weird questions, like if he enjoyed a happy childhood and has delusions of grandeur. Napoleon calls them traitors, and leaves. As Nicole confronts him later, Napoleon gets angry, telling her he offered her a world, and she fails to believe him, saying she has no faith. She replies she has faith in him, calling him Eugene, and Napoleon yells he's not Eugene, that Eugene is a nobody. Nicole replies Eugene is everything to her. He says he's Napoleon, and Nicole frustrated yells that she hates Napoleon, who took her husband from her, and now is taking him from her too. He leaves her, and goes out to a bar where he sees Dr. Lambert and tells him to look at him and tell him what he sees. Lambert answers he sees a nobody. Napoleon says he is his emperor, and Lambert replies he doesn't want his emperor back, no one wants him back, they prefer him dead. Napoleon gets angry, asking who he is, and Lambert tells him to follow him and he will have his answer. They walk through the streets, going inside a guarded place, and Lambert tells him to wait for him. After a couple minutes, Napoleon starts looking around, seeing someone in his costume, asking what place this is, but gets no answer. He suddenly sees a lot of other people dressed similar to Napoleon, all having mentally disorders. Guards appear to gather them, and as a guard sees him, he starts running. He's locked inside, and so he climbs over a wall and gets hurt on some sharp metal pieces, all of which Lambert sees from the bushes, dropping Napoleon's painting in a well. The hurt Napoleon returns home to Nicole. As he comes in, he sees the boy playing with the machine, telling him that that is not how Napoleon's life ended, and will explain it to him. Not long after, Nicole enters the room, and the boy wakes up, asking if he can have another story. Nicole says it's bedtime now, after which she helps Napoleon with his injury, saying he has very delicate hands. She cares for him, and he smiles, slowly saying her name. She leans in and tells him he's her Napoleon. Winter arrives, and Napoleon slowly gets up from bed not to wake Nicole. He looks at an image in a book, and the boy asks who it is, and he replies it's his son, who he hopes will be a better man than his father. He tears down all his military plans, and burns it all. Nicole suddenly hears him yelling from outside, and as she comes out, they start playing around in the snow. She later thanks him for showing he can be a happy man. He picks up a box for her, and in it are two blood red ruby earrings, which she absolutely loves, and makes her really happy. Next, Napoleon goes back to the garrison, saying he has a message for Sergeant Borel and wants to leave him what's in the box. The soldier says he recognizes him from somewhere, but Napoleon just continues. He says the message should read, Eugene Lenormand is dead, but quickly regrets it, telling him to instead write, Eugene Lenormand has moved on, and he left this to remember him by. He then walks away, back home to Nicole. The body of able seaman Eugene Lenormand was brought back from St. Helena with great ceremony, and now lies in the imperial tomb beneath the Golden Dome at the tomb of Napoleon. Napoleon Bonaparte lived on in Paris and now rests at the cemetery of St. Thomas at the side of Nicole Truckout. The End
Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this, and hit the like button to help us out. Until next time, take care.